Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's episode is the next installment of the brilliant Firefly, Revolt, the final book in our original trilogy by Daniel Hines. If you haven't already, listen back to books one and two of Firefly to get caught up. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Brilliant Firefly, Revolt. Chapter 7, Troubled Waters. The chill waters of the Atlantic churned and thrashed in a violent blur, but Jill didn't slow. It had been two days since they'd found the lighthouse, and the Firefly suit was finally back in operation. After a bare few hours of testing, Jill had set out to find her mother. Everything's looking good so far, said Specs in her ear. Keep tight to the water and none of the satellites will be able to pick you up. Copy that, said Jill, twisting in a tight barrel roll and then leveling out like a fighter jet. She told herself she was just checking out the thrusters again, but really it just felt so good to fly. Cutting through the air faster than sound, controlled by the minute adjustments of her body, she felt like a bird. Not one of the little flitty ones that hung around her mother's bird feeders, though. She was the hawk that struck like a laser, like grace and danger, a weapon with feathers. She wanted to feel it, to remove the helmet and let the wind roar past her face. Then again, at this speed, even a pebble would hit me like a bullet, she thought. So helmet on it was. You're coming up to your mother's tracker signal, Speck said. You should have a visual on wherever she is any minute. An icy hand gripped Jill's heart. She had always been brave, to a fault, really. But flying towards the Scarlet King's secret base? She'd have to be crazy not to be a little scared. At least, that's what she kept telling herself. No turning back now, she thought. Let's see what we're dealing with. She rose a little further above the waters, the yellow glow of the firefly jet making the wave tips sparkle and shimmer. Going up, I think I see... Oh, my goodness! Wow, Specs agreed. Ahead, a monstrous island loomed into view. It was easily a mile across, a knotted mass of red vegetation and sharp-edged peaks of volcanic stone. The island was mostly overgrown, but through her enhanced vision, Jill saw several roads cutting through like brown scars. Metal doors studded the dark stone in a few places, all of them sealed. Over everything, draped like a heavy web, was thick red ivy. Jill zoomed in and saw all the vegetation had the same brick-like texture as the new supers. You seeing all of this, Specs? Yeah, more brick. Can't be a coincidence. Right? The Scarlet King is into some new kind of genetic engineering. Whatever it is, it definitely goes way beyond just beating Firefly. Be careful, Jill. Sure thing. Gonna try to stay low. She dipped back down close to the water, slowing to subsonic speed. She hadn't seen any guards, but it was best to be careful. Though it was odd. Wouldn't the Scarlet King have some kind of defense system? Even if this place was invisible to satellites and radar, someone could still happen upon it by accident, right? As if triggered by her thoughts, a piece of that red ivy curled up and out of the water. Jill yelped and tried to dodge, but it slapped wetly against her ankle armor as she zipped by. That was weird. You see that, Specs? Speck started to reply, but it garbled to static. Jill sighed with frustration. They had theorized the comms might fail like the satellites and radar, but Jill had been hoping they wouldn't. On your own now, she said to herself. Time to go get mom. Another piece of red ivy whipped up in front of her. This time, she managed to gracefully corkscrew around it, but then a second and third lashed upwards as well. She burned one away with a blast from her fist, but the other slapped her hip and sent her into a tumble. Panicked, she managed to right herself just before splashing into the ocean. She hovered in place for a moment, getting her bearings. The Firefly HUD flashed warnings about altitude and stability and enemies, enemies in the water. Red tendrils of ivy began to rise all around her, ones longer and thicker than before. 
They curled towards her, moving with animal intelligence. Up close, Jill could see the tendrils were lined with jagged brick suckers. It wasn't ivy at all. It was tentacles. Ew, no! Jill spat, triggering her jets. She shot upwards just as a giant brick-red mouth burst from the ocean beneath her. It was a shark's mouth, easily 30 feet across, deep as a grave and lined from top to bottom with gleaming teeth. In the mouth's center was a black gullet, ready to swallow her whole. The mouth snapped shut, inches below her toes with a deafening crack. As it crashed back down to the ocean, Jill got her first good look at the creature. It had the front half of a shark and the back half of a squid, trailing hundreds of tentacles. All of it was the same rough brick red as the new supers. And it wasn't done yet. Even as the mutant dove, those tentacles lashed up. Jill burned away a dozen with her energy blasts and tore some away from her legs with raw strength. Gotta get out of here, she said, triggering her jets again. The glow around her grew more brilliant and she started to rise, but then a thick tentacle wrapped around her waist, dragging her back. She burned into it, but more lashed around her legs. She roared into her mask, but then her arms were pinned to her side. With a scream, she was hauled back into the water. Everything went dark for a moment, and then her lens adjusted. The suit should be fine underwater. It was designed to work anywhere, even space, but it was always a risk. She looked around, but all she could see were more tentacles. Their brick red suckers scraped along her armor, trying their best to bite into her. So far, they weren't having much luck, but Jill didn't want to give them too much of a chance. She triggered the electric current on the outside of her armor. The tentacles wrapped around her legs got zapped, and the water conducted the charge to nearby tentacles, too. They cringed away, and she was thrown violently free. She tumbled through the water like a shirt in the washing machine. Which way was up? Panic ate at her. So much dark water in every direction. Why had the brick monster let her go completely? Suddenly, the gaping shark mouth was rushing towards her out of the blackness of the deep. Jill screamed as the giant shark jaws clanged down on her suit, squeezing painfully tight. It had bit her at the waist, but the teeth couldn't quite penetrate the armor. Frustrated, the mutant brick shook her back and forth viciously, like a dog trying to tear open a toy. When that didn't work, it started to pick up speed. Jill got her hands in between the jaws, trying to pry herself free. She got them open an inch, two inches, the woven muscles in her suit amplifying her strength, power coursing through every circuit. Just a little more. Boom! The mutant drove her full speed into a steel plate set in the bottom of the strange island. Jill felt her teeth rattle in her head and saw pops of light. Still gripping her in its jaws, the creature swam around, building speed until the water was surging by. The steel plate in the stone seemed to glow as it got larger and larger. Things weren't off to a good start, she had to admit. Still, this was just some mutant, brick or no. She was Firefly, wasn't she? The greatest superhero ever. The champion of Giga City. Who did this shark think it was? Jill felt the anger building inside her. The shaky matchstick anger that sparked and flickered. She fed it her rage, letting it roar into a bonfire. She roared along with it, hammering the shark's face with her gauntleted fist. With every strike, she unloaded her energy blaster. The brilliant yellow light had been enough to burn away the tentacles, but it didn't seem to do much to the shark. The mutant beast just bit down harder, grinding the firefly armor in its rows of jagged teeth. No, 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 no! Jill cried as the mutant drove her again into the metal panel. This time it didn't back away, though. It kept her pinned to the metal in its jaw, tentacles slithering up and scraping along the firefly armor looking for a joint, a seam, a weakness. What could she do? The blasters weren't working. The anger wasn't helping. She had to think. Okay, the mutant's too strong for my blaster, she thought. It's too big to throw, too big to shock, and I definitely don't want to risk rocketing down that throat to get past the brick skin. 
Man, the Scarlet King made these bricks tough. I can't believe they stand up to the blasters. These things can even melt through steel. Through steel! Jill wrenched herself sideways in the creature's jaws. Inch by grinding, biting, grasping inch, she fought one arm free. All right, Jaws, she said, still scraping between its teeth. No more playing with your food. She punched her free hand into the metal panel, letting loose a blast of energy at the same time. The panel ripped like tinfoil, leaving a jagged hole a few feet across. The top half of Jill slipped through, and the mutant slammed its own head into the sharp edges. It drew away from the pain, releasing Jill just long enough for her to pull her body the rest of the way into the hole. She found herself at the bottom of a dark pool, though she could see red and white lights over the surface. Should she go up? Was she in the island? Beneath her, the mutant slammed into the metal plate again. The hole she had put in the steel bent wider, groaning against the power of the shark head strikes. Its teeth gnashed and screamed against the metal. It started to chew its way into the room. Well, that settled that. Jill triggered her jets and surged through the water, rising towards the strange lights, twinkling somewhere high above. Chapter 8 Failed Experiments Jill surfaced into a large chamber. It was empty save for a small submarine, bobbing gently at its dock. A tunnel entrance showed a path slanting upward and inward towards the island center. I made it in, Jill thought to herself, amazed. I actually did it. So far, all was quiet. Too quiet, thought Jill, and then laughed at herself. Better to be careful. She opened her left hand, a panel rolled back from her palm like a closing flower. Slowly, a few at a time, a small cloud of fireflies drifted out. They began to flit about, scanning the area. No guards, no cameras even. That should have made Jill feel better, but it didn't. Scarlet King was too smart to have no defenses in place. No cameras just meant that something mean was waiting inside. Well, thought Jill, Firefly can handle mean, especially when people are in danger and especially when it's my mom. She triggered the suit's stealth mode. There hadn't been time for a full camouflage job. Jill had imagined a reflection system that would work similar to Harry Potter's invisibility cloak, but that was still just schematics on a page. Instead, the suit extinguished its yellow light and silenced the heavy footfalls. It wasn't exactly ninja-like, but it was better than nothing. Scanning ahead as she went, Jill walked up the pathway. It twisted through the thin layer of rock in a tight spiral, lit by smooth veins of brick-red stone. At the top, Jill found herself in a small antechamber. The walls were rounded stone, too clean and regular to be natural. An open door showed the hallway beyond was more stone, but had fluorescent panels alongside the glowing red veins. From outside, the island had seemed to be natural, But inside, Jill saw the telltale signs of construction. The Scarlet King was a tech genius when he needed to be, but his true mastery was biology, and this island was his showcase. Jill scanned the hallway and found it empty. She started walking, heading towards the center of the island. It was a maze, but her fireflies mapped the tunnels as she went, so at least it was a maze she could solve. As she went, she thought of the red brick ivy covering the island. Was that how the Scarlet King had created it? He had definitely found some kind of power in whatever created that red brick. Harpy and Barbariod had been the start, one augmented by biology, the other by tech, but they were crude compared to the brick. Each brick had been wildly different and wildly powerful. There were a lot of them too, it seemed like. Could they be grown at will? What about creatures like the mutant tentacle shark? Jill shook her head. There were so many questions, but they could all wait until Mom was safe at home. The hallway ended in an open chamber, perfectly round and about five stories tall, but Jill couldn't be sure as it was mostly cloaked in darkness. She switched on her night vision, but there was some kind of signal jamming her infrared. Great, she thought. 
Instead, she triggered a spotlight on her chest, illuminating the area in front of her. She entered the chamber, body tense and alert. As she did, a panel dropped from the ceiling behind her, slamming into place with an echoing bang. Jill whirled and blasted the panel with her fist. It scorched and started to warp, but didn't give away. Suddenly, there was a sharp noise behind her. High on the wall, a light hummed to life. Jill turned, her back to the sealed door, and gasped. The light was set into the ceiling of a glass cell. Inside sat a monster. It was a brick, one so tall and wide he had to hunch to stand. His mouth was cavernous, his teeth great ivory squares. He squinted at Jill, and she saw hate in his eyes. It was Hippopotaman, Jill realized, the first super she had ever fought, except he had been turned into a brick. He was even bigger than he used to be, with muscles like steel girders, his already tough skin looking impossibly thick. Behind her, another light snapped on. She whirled and another cell was lit, way up near the ceiling. Inside, Jill watched a squat brick woman burst into flames her hair floating around her smiling face like a blazing wreath. She laughed, fire spilling from her lips. Jill jumped as the cell in front of her sprang to life. Inside was Barbariod, or what was left of him. Whatever process made you into a brick, it apparently hadn't worked with Barbariod's fusion of machine and flesh. He had fused to the ground, his torso growing out of a slab of red brick. He looked like a half-carved statue. That light that normally glowed in his eye was dead, but when his human eye fell on Jill, his mouth started to move. He's trying to talk, Jill realized. Horrified and curious, she placed a hand on the glass. The audio sensors picked up and amplified his voice. When he spoke, it was dry and painful sounding, like someone being dragged over gravel. I am Barbarian he said. The Baron of Battle, the Sultan of Skirmish. (coughs) He trailed off in a craggy cough. I remember, said Jill in Firefly's baritone. She should have been angrier. This creature had broken her grandpa, had stolen her mother, but he looked so pathetic, so weak. Whatever he had been before, she pitied him now. His coughing ground to a halt, his one remaining eye bored into hers. Don't. Don't let him do it. The Scarlet King. Do what? Jill, Firefly, said. Barbariod's arm, growing at an awkward angle from his half-blocked torso, curled to touch his own chest. The brittle fingers scuffed on his metal plating with a plang. This. Evolve, everyone, to this. His hand beat weakly against his chest. Don't let him do it! He suddenly roared, causing Jill to stumble away with a start. More lights snapped on, revealing more brick-red marvels and monsters. Jill saw what looked like an upright raptor. There was a slender man who waved and burst into a black mist, A beautiful woman who blinked sideways and floated, the hems of her dress barely dusting the floor. A demon, a half-stretched man, a dozen malformed animal hybrids. One at a time they lit, until the entire room was glowing, walls ringed by cells. Jill jumped again as Hippopotaman slammed a giant fist against the wall of his cell. Grinning, he did it again, and again. Others took it up with him thumping their cages, roaring in time, stamping their hooves and clicking their talons and nails. They began to chant, a crude imitation of the usual fans from the news. Firefly! 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 Jill scanned for her mother, but she was nowhere in sight, thankfully. Jill shuddered thinking about her mother trapped in this strange prison, or hospital, or whatever it was, surrounded by these mutated creatures. The chanting continued. The pounding grew louder. Jill tried to burn her way through the panel again, but it was too thick. Going to have to hack my way out, she thought, 
looking for some sort of control panel that connected to the trap door. Behind her, there was a short, sharp crack. She paused, barely daring to look. The cracking came again, long and slow as winter ice. Jill turned and saw Hippopotaman leaning against his cell wall, glass cracking like a lightning bolt in slow motion. It spread from his fist and climbed slowly. No, 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 whispered Jill. The crack hit the ceiling and the cell wall shattered, broken safety glass raining down. With a roar, Hippopotaman dragged himself free and dropped to the ground, shaking the room with thunder. He began to laugh, raising his giant arms, watching his muscles bunch under his new brick skin. The power! He raved to himself. Sweet king, the power! He began to laugh, a deep, stomach-rumbling laugh. All right, fine, said Jill, raising her fist. I've beat you before, and I can do it again. Creak! Looking up, Jill saw another cell begin to crack. The creature inside ran a long, pointed nail down the glass, etching a deep line for the crack to follow. This isn't a prison or a hospital, Jill realized suddenly. It's a trap! An alarm began to sound, shrill and whooping, The lights all went red, bathing the room in scarlet. Another cell burst open in a spray of glass. Another. Shards rained down around Jill, musical as piano keys. Panicked, she fired a shot from her blaster, sending a catwoman sprawling back into her cell. Another shot deflected a steaming spear of solid ice. Hippopotaman roared, so she kicked on the thruster jets, raising into the air. The raptor man leapt after her and she punched him flat with a well-timed jab. A long arm stretched from a cell and coiled around her leg like an anaconda. Jill fired her blaster and the arm fell away smoking, uncoiling to flop limply to the ground. She hit the ceiling and hovered there for a moment. It felt like going up for air. Before she could draw a breath, though, she was pulled back down. By what, she couldn't tell. Something like a viscous spit splatted on her mask, obscuring her vision. Something else coiled about her ankles, fighting her jets. Her arms were grabbed, then her legs too. The alarm sounded wildly. The lights began to pulse. Her suit's internal alarms joined the cacophony. There was something in the air now. Gas? Poison? Jill's head began to swim. She roared, that matchstick of anger inside her flaring and guttering. She felt drowsy, too tired to fight, her eyelids trying to slam like the steel panel that had her trapped. Something climbed onto her back and she launched it with a judo throw. Something else punched her in the stomach and broke knuckles on her armor. She triggered her jets again and slammed into the wall, denting it and sending her sprawling. The air on the ground was a little clearer. She was able to draw a single clean breath before it sealed her throat like cement. It was growing quiet now. Nothing was attacking her. Nothing but the gas. The world was a soft, cottony darkness. A peaceful bed was calling her name. I'm coming, Mom, she said, but no one heard her. Bathed in the red light of the alarms, oblivious to their endless screeching, Jill was pulled down into sleep. To be continued. Thanks for listening. 